a wee touch of spring and whimsy. Welcome to Bone Night DIY, I'm Monica, thanks for joining me. Today is the Hearts and Flowers Spring Medley collab with two of my favorites, Indiana Jones and Dawn of Shabby Meets Bling. Both of these ladies are such an inspiration to me and you'll find links to their channels as well as the playlist in the description box. I have two sweet, easy, and budget-friendly projects for you today. Let's get into it. Trust me when I tell you, anyone can do this. I'm going to be using some model magic to start out. I've grabbed a healthy handful and I'm going to knead it and condition the clay by rolling it and just working it with my fingers. I feel like the more you condition it, the less likely it is to crack. I'm going to roll out a long cane, kind of tapering it at one end. I cut off a section. This is going to be the head of our snail. I'm going to roll it out a wee bit more to elongate it just a wee bit and to round the ends. One end is slightly thicker than the other. That's actually going to be the part with this head. So I'm going to give it a tiny little bend, just like that, kind of like a candy cane. There we go. We'll set that aside. And now we'll take the rest of that cane of clay. And really focusing on the one end, I want to get that a lot thinner than the rest. This is going to be his shell. We wanted to have a carrot shape when we're done. Sort of. <laughs> now we're going to take that thin end and we're going to start rolling there to make a spiral shell for our snail. We're just going to coil it in on itself. So we're just going to bend this and just keep coiling it up until we're happy with, you know, the size, the general size of it. All right, let's take a look. That looks good. So I'm just going to cut off this extra. And I'm going to reshape that end so that it's nice and flat. Now I'm going to push the two sections together. Now I didn't do this, but I would recommend either anchoring it with a toothpick or glue those two sections together because when I painted him, the head started to come away from the body. Anyway, I just kind of worked the two pieces together and then I took my tool handle and rolled over it, you know, to incorporate the clay like I usually do. So I'm just going to push those two pieces together and smooth them out. But like I said, you know, best to probably glue or anchor it with a toothpick. And I'm just going to fuss with him a wee bit here, you know, make sure that he's kind of lined up the way I want him. And then I'm going to set him aside to dry overnight. Now I'm going to make some mushrooms, and I'm doing that by rolling some clay into a small ball. I'm going to cut that ball in half, and I'll set one half of it aside. The other half, I'm going to roll into like a cone shape for the bottom part of the mushroom. And just like before, I'm focusing on the one end so that it's pointier than the rest. And then I'm just going to flatten it out so that the bottom's nice and flat and a little wider than the top. See, it's kind of like an elongated gumdrop shape. I'm going to take that other half, roll it into a ball, flatten the one side to make the cap, you know, just kind of shape it like a mushroom cap. <laughs> so there we go. One side's flat, the other's rounded, and I'm just going to push that right onto our stem. Now, I didn't have any problem with the mushrooms like I did with the um, snail pulling away, but you might want to glue these too. I'm going to make three of them in total, and I'll set those aside to dry overnight as well. Now our snail is nice and dry, and he's ready for some paint. I'm going to give his head and body two coats of Ceramco Palmetto. It's a very soft, light, springy green. It's pretty. His shell is going to get two coats of Ceramco GP Purple.
Okay, I'm pulling out my folk art floating medium. I'm gonna prep my brush by dipping it into the medium and getting a nice healthy coat on there. I'll side load with my paint. I'm just scooping up the paint onto one corner of the brush. This is Americana Irish Moss. And I'm gonna float right along that crease where the snail's body meets the shell. I'm just gonna shade right in that crease there. And I'm gonna come up around his head and in the crease of his neck, anywhere where I think there would be a shadow or that I want to see, you know, a little extra color. Yeah, and of course I'm going to do it on both sides. Now with Ceram Code Passion, I'm going to shade right along where his shell meets his body and around the spiral of the shell. Again, I'm really kind of sticking to anywhere where there might be a shadow and where I want to see any extra color. And of course, we're going to do the other side. Now, you know, I always like to add extra colors to my shading. So I'm coming in now with Americana Spice Pumpkin. And again... I'm going to go right along that crease between the body and the head and just pull some of that color in. I'm going to do this on the shell too, and I'm going to use several different colors. I guess you could consider this more of a wash than shading, but this is what I like to do. Of course, you could just leave them one color or, you know, whatever blows your hair back. Whatever your preference is, do that. So now I'm going to add some of that orange to the shell because, again, I like it to be cohesive. I want all those colors to kind of blend. Know what I'm saying? Now I'm adding some Ceramco Watermelon. You know, that's my favorite red. So we're going to get some of that in there. I'm going to pull some of that Irish Moss onto the shell. Now I'm going to dot along his neck and his shell with all the different colors that I use to shade. There's really no rhyme or reason. I'm just dotting wherever I think it would look cute. And like I said, I'm going to use all the different colors that I use to shade. So I'll concentrate on one color and then come in with another and so on. Now I did his neck first and then moved on to his shell once his neck was dry. Just so I had somewhere to hold him. You know what I'm saying? I did make the dots on his shell slightly bigger than the ones on his neck. With Hippo Gray, I'm going to give him a really simple face, just a cute wee smile. And I'll come in and give him just tiny little dot eyes. To seal him, I pounce on a top coat of Mod Podge with a cosmetic sponge. I'm going to add some Mod Podge along the bottom of his shell and his neck and sprinkle on some chunky iridescent glitter to give him like a dewy, sparkly feel. I'm more or less sticking to where all those little dots are, make them kind of shiny. I've also added some glitter to a couple of these little pit berries that I'm going to use as, you know, the little doofers on the top of his head. I'm going to poke that wire right into the clay on his head. And of course, I'm going to add a dab of hot glue to hold him in place. And he's going to get a wee flower as a hat too. He's all ready for spring. 
For his base, I've painted a four inch wood desk with two coats of Ceramco Apple Green. And now I'm going to float around the edges with Americana Irish Moss just to add some interest. Each mushroom stem will get two coats of Ceram Coat Oyster White. One mushroom cap will be watermelon, one will be GP Purple, and the third will be Spice Pumpkin. They'll each get Oyster White dots, and I sprinkle those dots with chunky iridescent glitter. I'm going to outline the base with this really pretty leaf ribbon. I think I got this from Timu. I'm hot gluing it right around the edge. Now we'll assemble. I'm using Aileen's tacky glue and hot glue to attach them to the base. He'll go right in the center. And I'm going to glue on the mushrooms. I'm putting the purple and the red on this side. And I'm going to add a wee berry in between. We'll add the orange mushroom and a couple more berries on the opposite side. And he's done. I will spray him with a clear coat of flat matte sealer just to keep the glitter from shedding. DIY 2 is the little companion piece. I'm going to use this wee slat of wood from the Dollar Tree as a background for our mushroom scene. I'm going to condition another handful of clay. Again, I'm just, you know, working it with my fingers and getting it nice and soft. I'm going to roll out another cone shape just like I did with the smaller mushrooms. And here I'm just measuring the length against the board that it'll eventually be attached to. So once I get it to size, I'm going to flatten it out somewhat. So you can see I'm just patting it on the table to get that one side flat. And now I've rolled another ball, and I'm flattening that. I'm going to stretch it out a bit and shape the cap of the mushroom. With my clay tool, I'm going to add a wee bit of detail. Adding some lines. I'll press the stem to the cap, ensuring that there's good contact there. Now let's make sure that this actually fits on our board. And you know what? I want this to be a little more of a pointy capped mushroom. So I'm going to take care of that right now. I'm working that clay until I get the point that I want. Now this does look like it's just a little too wide. So again, just working it with my fingers to fit onto that space. Now I'm going to let that dry overnight. In the meantime, we'll paint the wee plaque. This is going to be two-toned. There'll be a sky section and a grass section. So for the sky section, I'm going to do two coats of ceram coat surfboard. Before we add the grass section, I'm going to float some shading around the blue part of the plaque. Using my dirty brush, I'm going to side load with ceram coat Tahiti Blue. Stroke my brush on my plate to blend the two colors, and it's going to give me a nice ombre effect. So you can see where the colors blend there. Starting at the dividing line, I'm just going to stroke right around the edge of the blue section, reloading my brush as I need to. I just want to get those colors nicely blended. doesn't have to be perfect because the mushroom is going to eat up most of that space anyway.
There we go. I've painted the gray section with two coats of apple green. And once again, I'm going to side load my brush, this time with Irish moss. Work those two colors together, just like I did with the blue, and just float around that green section. Our mushroom is dry and ready for paint, so I'm going to use the oyster white on the stem just like I did on the other wee mushrooms. The cap will get two coats of watermelon. And big ol' oyster white dots. Now they too will get some glitter, but we're going to do that later on. Now I just want to show you that I made a wee version of this snail and painted him with the same colors. I made him the exact same way, just on a much smaller scale. I'm going to dip my detail brush into some floating medium and I'm going to shade him just like I did the bigger version and he'll get the wee dots the whole nine yards. While the snail dries, we're going to shade around the white section of the mushroom. I'm using Spiced Pumpkin for this, and I'm going to get into all those little details that I put in with the um, clay tool. I shade around the cap, first with GP Purple. And then I come back in with Passion. I'm just going around the very edge. Yeah, she's going to get a cheery wee face. Little la la lashes. A wee button nose and a cute wee smile. Ever so dainty. <laughs> and of course some eyebrows. I dot her cheeks with spiced pumpkin. And we'll dot on some highlights to her cheeks, too. Our snail's going to get some antennas. It's just a little wire that, that I curled over itself. And I'm going to add a wee dab of hot glue in that open space. And then I'm going to dab that with some orange paint and some glitter. Just like we did with the big snail, I'm going to add glitter to the very bottom of his body. Just going to dip him right into the glitter. Now I'll add glitter to the white dots on the cap. I'm just going right in the center of the bigger white dot with more white paint and shaking on that glitter. I push the snails we do for into place. Cute, right? And I trim out the bottom of the wood plaque with more of the leaf ribbon. I'll glue my mushroom right into place. There we go. Cute. And now I'll add the snail. A wee flower and a couple of berries and we're done. This too will get sprayed with a clear matte sealer just to keep all the glitter in place. That's one happy wee mushroom. Hmm. <laughs> Here's a final look. I hope you enjoyed today's projects. They were really simple and they are very affordable. I know you can get clay at the Dollar Tree. My Dollar Tree doesn't have it, but I understand most do. And um, you'll have yourself a wee touch of spring whimsy. Please be sure to check out Dawn and Annie's channel. You'll find links in the description box along with a list of my supplies. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.